All right, let's dive into some practical techniques to help alleviate sciatica pain while focusing on hip mobility while stretching the glute and hip extensors. Start by assessing your patient's hip mobility. Once you've gathered enough information, we'll begin with a gentle static stretch. Flex the hip into deep flexion and place your patient's foot on your shoulder closest to the table. Then apply your body weight into the leg until you feel comfortable resistance. To deepen the stretch, release your right hand and gently pin down the other leg so it does not lift off the table. This will amplify the stretch. So move with care and ensure your patient's comfort is prioritized. I prefer to perform these stretches while the patient is clothed. Before the main session begins, take 10 minutes before the massage to give them a good stretch. Make sure to give clear instructions and advise your patient to wear athletic clothing for better mobility during the session. For this next stretch, start on the opposite side of the table. Flex the patient's hip until it reaches a 90 degree angle. Then, bring the leg across the body while actively driving the knee down until the patient reports a comfortable stretch across the glutes. The closer you push near the knee, the more intense the stretch gets. Conversely, the stretch is less intense when you push down on the thigh or hip. If your patient has necessary mobility, you can eventually work their shin into your belt line. This frees up your hands, allowing you to add a little more rotation or compression to the stretch. Experiment with different positions, such as varying the degree of flexion, rotation, and knee extension. Remember, there is no one-size-fits-all approach here. Moving on, it's crucial to identify the bony landmarks before you begin working on your client with deep pressure. Pay close attention to the crest of the ilium, the edges of the sacrum, and the spinous processes of the spine. Palpate these areas with clarity, remembering that while our structures are similar, each person's anatomy can vary significantly. Start with a generous amount of cross fiber friction on and around the sacrum. Nothing too intense, just enough to generate heat and increase blood flow to these bony landmarks. Once you've warmed up the area, let's move on to some deep stripping. Begin by locating the spinous process of L4. To do this, find the top of the iliac crest and move medially. Once identified, pronate your arms so that your thumbs meet parallel to each other. Dig your fingers into the lamina groove between the spine and the longissimus muscle. Work your way across the rector and into the quadratus lumborum QL region. Repeat this process as necessary, always monitoring your client's comfort and feedback. Now, for a more dynamic and rewarding technique, begin by digging your thumbs into the lamina, just as before. Once you're in position, instruct your patient to take a deep breath and push their back into your thumbs as they inhale. It's important to stand your ground and maintain consistent pressure throughout the breath. If your patient can handle more, apply a bit more pressure on the exhale. <sighs> this technique is quite unique and not something you'll often see or experience out in the wild. So be sure to share it with others and use it on anybody who might benefit. It feels amazing and incredibly productive. Easy enough, right? Oh, uh, wait a second. Have we even discussed what sciatica is? The sciatic nerve originates from L4 to S3 nerve roots in the lumbar and sacrospine, and it's the largest nerve in the human body. It exits the pelvis through the greater sciatic foramen, usually passing beneath the piriformis muscle. It travels down the posterior thigh. Understanding its origin and pathway is crucial in massage therapy for effectively addressing issues like sciatica. Where nerve compression can lead to pain, numbness, and tingling, massage can help alleviate these symptoms by targeting muscle tension and improving circulation around the nerve. Moving on to the sacral region. To start, fold the blanket in half. I prefer to work over the sheet for this technique as it gets us closer to the gluteal line. Begin by palpating the edge of the sacrum with your palm. Using your palm is crucial here to avoid any mishaps. Once you've located the sacrum, 
place the left thumb at the superior angle of the sacrum, right against the bone but not on it. Use the palm of the other hand to drive energy and pressure downward. Then move laterally to peel the muscle away from the sacrum, creating space for the sciatica nerve. For maximum pressure, ensure your table is low. Your arms are straight and you're using your body weight effectively. Hold this pressure for 5 to 10 seconds and move down the sacrum, half inch at a time. Now, this might be a good time to ask, would you consider subscribing? If not, no worries, I'll try to win you over in the next video. But do me a favor, give that like button load to Popeman for me. For an alternative approach, you can use your fist. This method covers a larger area of the sacrum, providing a broader pressure, less acute. Apply pressure mainly with the knuckles of the index and middle fingers, moving down and away as before. Now, let's move on to the piriformis. This is the muscle we've all been waiting for. But real quick, before we get into that, here's a nice little touch of transition. Stand on the opposite side of the table, externally rotate the hip and get a firm overhand grip on the ankle with the left hand pulling it towards you. Meanwhile, use your right hand to apply pressure along the low back, sacrum and pelvis. Alrighty, let's dive into the piriformis muscle. Start by shortening the piriformis muscle by externally rotating the hip. Locate the head of the femur, where the insertion of the piriformis is, and drive some pressure into the hip with your thumb while it's in its shortened position. Then, internally rotate the hip as you work your way towards the origin. If your thumb begins to fatigue, consider switching to your fingertips. The piriformis muscle lies deep to the glute max, so you'll need to use a generous amount of pressure to be effective. For a nice change of pace, provide some different shaped hip circles to keep the treatment interesting and dynamic. For patients with sciatica symptoms, this muscle tends to be quite tight, so move with care and make sure to warm the area thoroughly beforehand. If using the thumb feels too acute and painful for the patient, consider switching to a broader approach by using the fist. This method is equally productive, but not as precise. This technique beautifully leads into some deep irony with a nice flare of holding the leg in external rotation. Remember, it's important to have a conversation with your patient before working directly on the glutes above or below the sheets. Discuss their comfort level and remind them they can change their mind at any point if they feel uncomfortable. For an extra layer between you and the patient, all of these techniques can be performed over the sheet. Now, moving on to the hamstring. If you haven't picked up on the theme yet, we're simply tracing the path of the sciatica nerve as it travels down the leg. As always, start with a generous amount of warming techniques, using whatever methods you find best suited for your style. Here's one of my favorites that I'm particularly proud of. I like to use the word elegance. Elegance? Elegance. Elegance. When talking about massage, move like a ballerina. Imagine yourself gracefully stripping from distal to proximal, keeping your right hand tucked to prioritize comfort. It's a small gesture, but it makes a huge difference. Transition into your fist for some glue ironing. Doesn't that seem seamless, smooth, elegant, some would say? Why don't ballerinas get massage often? Because they're always on their toes and never need it. Nah. Now, let's get back to business. Cross fiber is mandatory and creates space between the tissues of the hamstring. I find I can get more depth when I flex the knee and put some slack into the hamstring, using my fingertips to strum the muscles. This beautifully transitions to our passive pin and stretch. Start by flexing the knee, putting the hamstring into slack. Begin from distal to proximal, applying pressure with your thumb on the lateral head of the bicep femoris. Then extend the leg and move up one inch at a time. Super simple. On the way back down, hop onto the medial hamstring, targeting the semitendinosus. And don't forget about your homie on the right, the semimembranosus. This is a passive stretch, so encourage your patient to relax and play dead. The nerve ends at the upper aspect of the popliteal fossa, 
when it branches into the distal nerves, the tibial and common peroneal nerves. Prior to diversion, these nerves are structurally separate, but only loosely held together by the sciatic nerve. If you want to learn more about calf work, feel free to check out some of my other content, like this video right here, or this one on the other side. Thanks for sticking around until the end. Stay cool, my dear friends, sending much love and good vibes your way, and oh, don't forget to subscribe. Peace out.